How wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing yet another unusual detection of what seems to be a black hole colliding with a star. But in this case, this particular collision also ended up predicting a very old theory in regards to black holes and stars. The star went supernova once the black hole entered the star itself. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail and talk a little bit more about what's behind this particular detection. Starting with the idea that in the last decade so many new things have been discovered and proven in regards to black holes. As a matter of fact, scientifically you could even call this decade the decade of black holes. We've had the first image of a black hole, we've had the first collision of black holes, and we've had so many other discoveries that nobody actually knew were even possible. They were possible theoretically, but nobody believed that we will be able to physically see them and observe them in detail. As a matter of fact, Einstein did not believe any of this was possible either. But thanks to the advances in telescopes, specifically these beautiful devices like this one right here known as NICER, this is on top of the International Space Station, in the last decade a tremendous amount of different types of black holes have been observed and proven, showing us that our theories were indeed quite correct. So for example, very recently there was another major confirmation in regards to the collision between black holes and neutron stars. Two of them were detected by a relatively recent um, analysis, and this is something that was actually theoretical but has now been officially proven. But for a very long time there was another theory in regards to binary systems and in regards to what happens to the stars themselves, especially if these stars are extremely massive and if one of them happens to turn into a black hole or a neutron star slightly sooner. The theory here was actually pretty simple. At some point these stars are going to start coming closer and closer to one another and also at some point both of these stars are going to start disrupting one another and the star that's more massive is very likely going to go supernova a little bit sooner. And once it goes supernova it's probably going to leave behind a neutron star or possibly a black hole. And this in effect will create what's known as the X-ray binary. There are quite a lot of them we've found in the last few decades and some of them are actually really well known. The most famous ones are the Cygnus X1 and Cygnus X3. If you have Space Engine for example you can easily find them by typing Cygnus X1 or X3 in here and then jumping into that system to discover something that looks like this. And if we dim this enough you'll see that it's a huge star with a slightly smaller object right there which is in this case a neutron star. And so this neutron star a few million years ago was also a really massive star and these two stars were in a close orbit with one another. But at this point it's sort of stealing a lot of the matter from its partner and we can see a lot of these effects coming as the x-rays and a lot of other types of radiation coming from the system. But in some cases these um, neutron stars or these black holes can end up coming closer and closer to the star because of the interaction with the matter from the star and because of the gravitational waves and eventually even start entering its outer envelope. Or in other words as the orbit of this object starts to decrease it can actually go inside of the star itself. And back in 2014, NICER right here accidentally discovered really unusual X-ray emissions coming from a galaxy approximately 480 million light years away from us. A galaxy that seemed to be pretty typical in every other way. But back then nobody really gave it a second thought. It was probably just another X-ray transient and probably some sort of a typical supernova. But now in the recent study that you can find in the description below, something else was discovered coming from that region. And extremely bright emissions of radio waves suggested that something was colliding with a tremendously large gas cloud in this particular region. Something that usually signifies a very powerful event. And this was recently discovered in the Very Large Array Sky Survey, also known as VLAS, which essentially was responsible for watching the night skies and trying to detect various radio waves across a huge chunk of night skies, representing the largest such observation in the last few decades. And so by combining these two events, the X-rays from 2014 and the radio emissions um, a few years later, the scientists realized that this was probably what theoretically was predicted a long time ago. This was a somewhat intriguing event where the supernova is caused by the black hole or neutron star entering the star and causing the supernova to occur much sooner than it would be otherwise, simply by disrupting the internal structure of the star itself. Or in other words, once the black hole or the neutron star entered the structure of its partner, it disrupted pretty much everything on the inside causing it to prematurely explode. 
something that would have happened either way, but in this case happened much much sooner because the star could no longer sustain itself. And in this particular case the scientists even sort of create the potential explanation and, in some sense, a kind of a story to what they believe happened in this particular star system. So back in 1700s, we essentially had the typical X-ray transient similar to Cygnus X1 and Cygnus X3. But for approximately 300 years, the black hole would slowly decrease its orbit getting closer and closer to the bigger partner. But as it approached the partner, it also started to create a lot of different disruptions on the outside, which created a lot of emissions of different types of gas surrounding the binary system with a relatively thick layer that came from the outer parts of the bigger star. And so after about 300 years, in 2014, the bigger star finally reached its limit. It could no longer sustain itself, it could no longer keep its shape, and basically exploded simply because the compact partner in this case started to interrupt the process of fusion, which accelerated the collapse of the star. And once the collapse started, some of the material from the larger star started to orbit the smaller partner, and as it usually happens with the accretion disks, it started to create the astrophysical jets moving at pretty much almost the speed of light. These extremely powerful jets pierced the larger partner and created the X-rays that were visible back in 2014. And this was of course also the initial stage of the supernova. But as the supernova itself started to expand and as all of the material started to move farther and farther away from the binary, it also started to hit some of the previously released gas that was thrown off by the black hole or the neutron star for pretty much 300 years. And as the supernova remnant collided with this gas, it started to create a lot of really powerful radio emissions, something that's been pretty much visible for the past four years. Which is exactly what the scientists recently observed and were able to connect to the observations from 2014. But in the middle of all of this, right now there's probably a binary system, very likely a black hole and a neutron star or two black holes or two neutron stars. And we kind of know what usually happens to them. Eventually they're going to collide, creating gravitational waves we should be able to detect. But it's probably not going to happen that soon. As a matter of fact, there's still a slight chance that when the supernova occurred, one of the objects might have gotten thrown out of the system. So we don't really know exactly what happens at the end, but we know what happened so far. And this definitely proves the original prediction in regards to black holes and X-ray transients. It looks like in certain systems, the black hole can actually disrupt the star and cause the premature supernova, which is generally referred to as the murder-driven supernova. And so definitely a pretty interesting discovery and a pretty interesting analysis. You can learn more about this from one of the press releases or from the paper in the description below. And so definitely a really exciting confirmation of a pretty interesting theory. Something that a few decades ago scientists believed would not be possible, but something that became a reality only because of all of the incredible telescopes and incredible observatories we have on the planet and in outer space. But I guess for now that's kind of all I wanted to mention. Check out all the relevant links in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.